Hello there everyone, this is I'm Mark V and welcome back to orbit above the desert planet of Ansira in Star Sector. Yes, we are still in the tutorial. We are still stuck in this single system. But hey, it's been it's been it's been a story so far. So that's why I'm okay with it. I mean, sure we're on the tutorial and sure I'm taking my time, but uh Eh, I, I don't. I go at my own pace usually. So, you know, let's go down to the trading section. So yeah, it is how I tend to go around a bit. So just sell the metal off. I've got some spare weaponry. Maybe we'll use it or we'll sell it. Don't know. Now then, the other buttons are all functional in this screen. But more importantly, we go to the fleets, and we've got access to the stuff we've got lying around here. So we've got. Um, our new destroyer, we've got our new carrier, we've got um, a shuttle, and we've got a frigate. So the Bellus, the Afarius, the Phobos, and the Don't Mind If I Do. One of these names is not like the others. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Um, I, I guess that's fitting for a phase ship. That is a phase ship, isn't it? Uh, wolf class phase ship. Sorry, assault ship. Da, 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 da. Shield generator, impressive weapon package. Yeah, phase skimmer. Teleports the ship forwards. Can sort three charges at once. So, this guy can teleport around to chase things. But, um. Yeah, we, we, can, we can do something about all these. So. We'll pull these guys out of Mothball. We don't have a enough crew to operate everything. So, we need to fix that. We need to fix these ships and we need to equip them. Let's sort out the crew first. If I hold down shift and left click I get a slider. And it's actually pulling up the total down at the bottom there so I can see when I've got enough. So I'll just bring enough crew so we've got enough to operate everything. Okay. Now, ordnance points. Ordnance points is total weaponry and systems. So each ship's got a limit on how much they can handle. Uh, different systems cost different amounts depending on ship size. This is the... Um, we're about to pay a visit to the ship fitting screen. Though I'm just here right now because I wanted to point out that here is also the ship market so I could buy and sell some stuff. But because of the states the system's in right now we can only buy ourselves really really... sorry we could sell stuff but we can only buy really bad condition ships. Luckily, if a ship has got a lot of damaged systems in it, it's actually really cheap. Unfortunately, that tends to mean they are of, of limited utility. And if you try to sell ships that are badly damaged as well, it's not worth it. This is why, like, um, when we were salvaging ships out, um, out there in the outer system, if a ship was too badly damaged to be of immediate use, then I was doing as the tutorial suggested and breaking the ships. The tutorial didn't mention it, but I was doing that because it's actually much more profitable and useful to break the ship than to actually salvage it and tow it along. Because you could get maybe like a few hundred credits for that, or you can get raw materials and supplies and stuff. So, you know, there are, there are benefits, but only if you think the ship might be of use to you to keep it intact. Anyway, with that, with that ramble, let's get on to the refits, shall we? There is something that the... AI did, which um, I think I've forgotten about, which is, uh, yeah. As part of the tutorial, the game gave me a free access to a storage locker on this planet. That normally costs you 5,000 credits to buy. It's um, a lot early on, but um, uh, later on in the game it's actually really cheap, but uh, it's worth mentioning. Wait, never mind. Hang on. Uh, oh, wait. Not done it yet. I need to actually tell him I'm here. Hey, buddy, I brought ships. Bunch of rust buckets, aren't they? Yes. But put some weapons on them, get a proper reefer done, and with a de dedicated crew, they'll do all right. It's no worse than what the pilots have got, at any rate. What the pilots? What the pirates have got? Yeah. Good thing I went to check on the storage locker before trying to do a refit. Jeez. Speaking of weapons. Yeah, I was just about to talk to you about that. Not much to buy on the open market, but we have some stores. I've already ordered local storage space. Um, to be assigned to you, and some suitable weapons transferred there, along with enough supplies to speedily bring the new ships back to full combat readiness. Use them to also fit your ships, sorry, to also fit to outfit your ships, 
Make sure you've got enough crew for a full complement, already done that. And then break the rogue mine defences at the inner jump point. Once this conversation is over, press R to open the refit screen. Um, after selecting a specific ship, you can press V to auto fit, pick a desired loadout, and the ship will be automatically refitted to match it, using whatever what weapons are available. In addition, you now have access to a local storage at Antira, and some weapons and supplies have been placed there. To access it, press the storage button in the trade screen. <coughs> so that, yeah, that's basically all. That's everything I just said, but with uh, more, more um, in story language. Yes, I take it you've stabilised the algorithm then. Correct. These cores seem like they can work miracles sometimes. Let me transmit the results. Good luck to you. If you fail, well, we'll have to send the security force to do the job, and then it could get very messy. It's good to know you're always working on plan B. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't trust me either, honestly. Come now, it's not so grim. I have every expectation you'll succeed, or I wouldn't send you. But it's my responsibility as commander to plan for every eventuality, not just rely on a miraculous saviour. Yeah, see, this, this game is reinforcing the fact that you're not a miraculous saviour. It's, um... You really are just another... Another schmuck just trying to get get by in this universe. Now, about the miners. The two fleets guarding the jump point will aid each other if you engage one when the other is nearby, so you have to, uh, you'll have an easier fight if you manage to separate them first. If you can't, it should still be a fight you can win, though. Uh, this is a fight I lost, by the way, the first time I tried it, so, yeah. Cop that back when the job's done. So, if I can press... Um, ah, it tells you the shortcut keys that can open it, so um, it was... F? No, that's fleet. It's R. Right. Here we go. Right, we're on the refit screen. Haha. -ha. But uh, I'm going to check my storage now. Yep, we've got a bunch of stuff. Oh, it gave us some fighters as well. Hmm. But it's given us graviton beams, arbalist cannons, annihilator rocket pods. It's given us a bunch of shiny things, actually. Ooh. Heavy armor mod spec. Armored weapon mount mod specs. Neither of which I'm interested in right now. I was just checking that because mod specs... They unlock mods you can use in your refits. You can unlock mod specs through um, skills leveling for your character as well. But um, anything you can get in the skills you can find on the market as well. So, you know, you don't have to get the skills to get the thing or you don't ever get the thing. You can still find it out in the game itself. Now, here's where we start to play around with our toys. This is the destroyer I've, I found. One hammerhead. Now, it said I can use auto fit, and the auto fit comes with a, a few um, preset types of uh, thing. So, we've got a balance variant, an overdriven variant, and a support variant. And then it tries to fit the weapon mounts and systems as, as closely as it can based on what you've got access to, which is listed. In here, you can tell it if you want to buy illegal stuff, buy legal stuff, use stuff you own in the station, that kind of thing. So, if you're playing, trying to play on the straight and narrow, you can tell it that it doesn't want to use uh, anything from the black market. But uh, yeah, it's down to your preference if you want to do that. But you can tell that's the auto fit settings as well. So, right, let's see. Uh, safety overrides and a flux distributor. Safety overrides. Isn't that the one that... Um... Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, reduces peak performance time by a factor of three, prevents the use of active vent, which is that purple cloud thing, which will rapidly vent, and drastically reduces weapon range past 450 units. So, th so this is... These are the whole mods I'm uh, looking at now. Safety overrides. Massive boost to speed. Um, also increases flux dissipation rate slightly, but it, it blocks up some stuff as well, so it's like a, a mixed bag. It's also very costly to install it. So it turns you into a fast but short range uh, and definitely over specced craft because you can't do active vent, so you have to be very careful with it. You're, you're more likely to overload with this because you've overridden all your safeties to get that extra performance. So, you know, there's, there's all sorts of odds, odds and ends in here. 
twin railguns, twin point defences, twin harpoons, twin heavy mortars. Hmm. Wait, we have railguns? Oh, we do have railguns. Neat. Okay, sure. Hmm. Sure, okay. Um, auto fit. So, it does this to suggest it, but um, I'm not going to mess around with my own settings right now. I'm, I'm actually going to do the auto fits a little bit. And then we'll see if I want to tune things a little bit further. So, blast doors, increase hold integrity, and less crew casualties. Plus distributors, extra flux distributors flux um, dissipation. As a note, by the way, the flux distributor and flux coil adjustant, adjustant are um, boosts to the flux capacity and the flux dissipation. They're only really worth it if you're already maxed out on the vents or the capacitors, respectively, because in terms of point cost, they are less efficient to put on your ship than just adding extra vents or capacitors, so you know, something to watch out there. But that's okay. Uh, you are... That's all of it. You, what can you got? We've got a few options here. An attack craft, a strike craft, or a support craft. Twin talons, twin broadswords, twin piranhas. Uh... None of these install any hull mods, but that's because we've got the defective manufacturer on board. If we look at that now, um, yeah, fighter speed is reduced by a third and damage taken increases by 50%. So fighters are a lot easier, more, a lot more easily shot down with this ship. However, supply cost to recover from deployment is reduced by 20%. So that it's cheaper to deploy a ship that's faulty, but it's generally not the best choice. You can say, yeah, watch. You got to watch it. I'm just going to refit as a, um, a strike craft, sure. This guy is. Uh, sure. Mix of weapons and it's just a sh um, an anti shield auto cannon. The wolf, though. The wolf. Has got um, four auto fit variants. We can delete a variant, by the way, with this cross, and then we can save custom variants for these ships. I'm just not really going into that too much. So confirm just a standard assault loadout with a bunch of stuff on it. And then, of course, we still got the um, the Agulus. We got the Ambition. We got the these guys. Only the one fit for this one, oddly enough. Yeah, there's not much I want to do in terms of customizing. So, sorry, that's like 10 minutes or so, like going, hmm, 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 maybe this, maybe that, hmm, hmm, hmm. And then I've just gone with the auto fit, so it's like you can slap in what you want, and it, you'll have something that works. And I'm okay with what I've got right now because I'm being forced into this fight more than anything, and I don't really want to be there, if that makes any sense. But uh, hey, we've also got these spare weapons and equipment and equipment and things, which I'll stash. Just in case. I'll bring some supplies along. Confirm. Everything's fixed up. Everything's ready. Uh, let's bring an extra 20 crew. Because you, actually, you can actually lose some crew if your fighters get shot down. At least as far as I understand it. I've not really played with the, a carrier too much. But that's what we've got. So... And I'll be in the um, the destroyer. Yes, because I did that last time when I failed. So yes, <laughs> okay, fine. So it wants us to go over here and clear the in-system jump point. Hopefully, I can actually do a good job of it this time. Yeah, look look at this. This guy is um, pursuing us because we did some black market trading. And it's because of the auto fit with the weaponry and stuff, so they knew something had happened and they went to have a look see. Okay. This guy is alone. The other guy is not here. So 
we're going to take this one on one. We've got um, they've got a bigger ship than me, but I've got more ships than them. So burn, get in there. Oh, you come in. Okay. Here we go. Rogue Miner Force. I outnumber you just a tad, but they've got a cruiser. I don't. I have a destroyer though, matched against their destroyer, and then I have more support ships than they do. So yeah, if we can fight them separately, great. I think we've got this one in the back. I'll deploy the freighter and the... The only ship that I don't want to deploy is actually the, the Mud Skipper because it's non-combat. Everything else is actually good for combat, so... Here we go. Now, I think my primary goal is probably going to be... Yeah, here we go. Uh, all ships try to avoid. Uh, order your fleet to avoid this enemy if at all possible. Yeah, so st stay, stay, hang back from that guy. And then try to murder those two. I mean, that, that, that shuttle is probably going to die fast. I'm going to go toast toe with the enemy hammerheads. And... Yeah, but they'll, they'll try to stay away from that um, big, bulky enemy cruiser. Look at this. The wolf is being chased by the enemy destroyer. Okay, I'm in. I've got enough weaponry, haven't I? Oh, weapon move two is missiles. Right. Nope. Yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, oh, something's hitting me in the back. What, what are those? I think those are bombs. At least I'm guessing that's what they are. Yeah, <laughs> I've got this one in the bag. Oop, there it goes. Owned. Who's next? Uh, yeah, everyone is trying to stay the hell away from that guy. I'm going to tell you everyone to go for that one. I'm going to turn off the avoid on that one. And I'm actually going to I'm going to engage that while my allies go for this guy and then these two over here and then go for join me over here. Yeah. There is actually an option I had which I didn't use in that fight there, which is my ship's special ability, which is um, accelerated ammo feed. It means my projectile weapons need less flux to operate, and they do more damage for a limited duration. So, yeah, I'm going to deploy that against this ship here. It, it rearms really quickly, but uh, yeah. You'll see what's going on down here. It's turned to face me, which is never a good, a good thing. Oh, an allied ship, a wayfarer, got disabled. Oh, and did I get overloaded? Hmm. I think I think I, I I think those rocket pods are definitely doing something to me. Oh yeah yeah yeah, this guy overloads my my ship my flux really quickly. And vents. Yeah, that, those rocket pods are kind of nasty, actually. Need to stay away and watch out for them. I don't have enough PD to try and stop them. And I will. Ammo feeds! Look at that rate of fire go. Haha! Oh, look at his flux climb as well. Oh dear. Yep, 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 yep. I can get you. But only for as long as my ammo feeds hold out. But uh, yeah, your, your flux kind of didn't like that, did it? 
oh yeah, that, there goes the, uh, the kites. Lowered performance, so it's, it's slowing down a bit with the fight now. Come on, shoot through his armour. Yep, yeah, there goes his armour. His forward armour is absolutely wrecked. You can see it on his um, target diagram just to the side of his um, thing. My shields are about to overload, so... Oh, yeah, overloaded. Oh, dear. I can still turn, but I can't really accelerate while overloaded as well, so it's a bad bad, bad state to be in. Though I seem to be getting back up, though, so I think all the other enemies are dead. Okay, let's, let's go back get back in there. There he goes. So that almost blew the nose off my ship. Ouch. <laughs> okay, that was fine. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, I think, but um, when a ship blows up like that, it damages anything that's too close. So, yeah, that was a thing. Let's see. Um, oh, the, oh, the um, the Wayfarer. That that was the my combat freighter that I started out with. It got disabled or destroyed. Everything else seems to be okay, though. It, 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 all, it all held together. Nothing got broken. And then all the enemies got dis disabled or destroyed, so... Okay, fine, yeah. Uh, 40 crew, no marines were lost. Forces were able to gain a complete victory. After the battle, 5 crew were rescued from life pods and intact compartments in the wrecks. So, okay, pick through the wreckage. There's a lot of stuff here. Take it all. So what's my fleet state now? It is functional. Combat readiness in general is reduced. However, I'm, I lost my original combat freighter. So I actually want to go back and do a quick pit stop. But that's okay. One fleet's down. One fleet's go. And with this, 25% chance to recover disabled ships after battle. Well, 25% better. Oh, hello. Yeah, see, that's suspicious. Um, looks vaguely displeased. Well, everything looks clean this time. So, yeah. That's being a bit blunt, but um, there's no evidence. But if you, st if you still black market trade too much, they actually build up evidence about you and... Um... Wait. Oh, I turned off my comms. Whoops. Right. Repair. If your comms are off, you can't repair your ships at a dockyard, by the way. <laughs> the game doesn't tell you that. You have to find it out for yourself. But that is definitely a thing. But I've refitted. Um, I'm gonna... Fortunately, because I lost that ship, my crew requirement went down. But uh, I'm gonna restock... significantly. Supplies are okay, fuel is okay, everything's okay. Yep, I'm good to go, I believe. Ooh, expanded deck crew. Reduce the rate at which fighter replacements decrease due to fighter loss by 25%. Increases the rate at which it recovers. That is a nice one to hang on to, but I don't have the money. Uh, maybe later when I get some cash. Okay, let's get going to the second fight then, because we are rearmed and ready. By the way, there is actually an option here. Um, it doesn't tell you, since the quest wants you to do it, but um, I think we can actually just charge into the jump point and escape. If we are so inclined. I did that by accident um, a bit ago. But it is an option for trying to get past all this. Ah, oh, there you are. Hello. Come here. Oh wait, no, I've turned off. Yeah, because I was using sustain burn, I just couldn't turn to keep up with it. Mm. 
Hello. Ah, I see. So these guys just didn't want to fight because they are much smaller than me. So they, they were trying to run away. Right, come here. My destroyer, my carrier. Uh, I guess the wolf. And the Phobos. Uh, the Shepherd? Okay, yep, yeah, let's deploy. So yeah, full force again. This time. Let's get in there and see what we can do about the enemy. Hurrah! Hopefully they don't try to run away. They have a habit of doing that sometimes. But yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm happy for the, these guys to go piecemeal, see what they do. Uh, I'm gonna engage from this right, this side here. Oh, incoming missile. And see what I can do about. Oh, that missile knocked out one of my en some of my engines. Yeah, that's why I was turning. I was I was listing badly to the side. Oh, it's got flare launchers. Okay. That won't do. I want to blow you up. Come here. Yes. Take my vengeance. Crunch. Well, that that. Hmm. Are those guys weak? I, I don't really. I don't really know a lot of the ship classes, honestly. But that guy went down really fast. Then I did. I kind of hit him in the side with a bunch of. Um, I think they're anti-hull missiles. So hey. But yeah, th this is not really worth. Um, it's not a worthy challenge as such. I think that was it, actually. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we actually got the buffalo. Um, hmm. Forty power grid, glitch sensors, erratic fuel injectors. It is in a very bad state. In general, uh, it's decently quick, but. Uh, Hmm. I don't think I want it. But yeah, that leveled me up again. So, one advantage of doing this tutorial is that I actually got a bunch of levels and things. Uh, recovered ships have fewer damage models on average. Yes, please. So, make ship, re ships are recovered in a bit better condition. And then, next level, I'm going to pick up that thing of, like, um, get... Uh, you know, just get more salvage. But yeah, uh, you can actually just go to this jump point and stabilize it without having to engage those fleets. It's just that the quest says, it implies you have to, but you don't have to. You load the stabilization algorithm into your jump program and the drive field goes through a series of esoteric fluctuations. Their resonance gradually cancelling out the instability in this jump point. The jump point should be stable enough to use within a day or so. There we go. And then I just have to go back. So it, it it makes you just think you have to fight that, but you don't actually have to do that. I think it's like a final test in the tutorial or something like that. And our combat freighter paid the price, but uh, it's okay. We've got um, something of force going. Definitely not significant, but we, we've got something. We have got something. Hey, Ganymede, I fixed your problem. Give me money. Well done! Station Commander Ganymede seems a bit giddy with excitement. We actually did it! You just never know with these things. It's such a relief not to be cooped up in the system anymore. Here's your reward. Well earned and with my gratitude. In addition, I've set you up with a monthly stipend from the um, Galatean Academy. In recognition of services rendered, it should run for three full cycles. So I gained 10,000, gained rep. Um, by the way, you get a, the stip, a stipend, which is like a steady monthly income for the first few years, even if you don't do the tutorial. But the tutorial actually tells you where it came from. So I think that in itself is, for law reasons, a good reason to do it. No, you don't have to. You don't have to do the tutorial. You just get it. Now, I expect the authorities at the headquarters on um, Jangala in the Korva system would like to hear about the recent events. Would you deliver the report for me? Ask to speak to the station commander, um, Suzuki, when you get there. Oh, and make sure to take enough fuel to make the trip. Flying in system, as you have been, doesn't use fuel, so it's easy to forget that flying in hyperspace does. It's not too far, but with your current fleet, you'll need at least five zero. 
units to get there. Yes. So it, it works out at least. If you manage to run fuel somehow and get stuck in an uninhabited system, if you manage to run out of fuel somehow and get stuck in an uninhabited system, and that'd be real feat on the um, that'd be a real feat on the Galatea Corvus route. Let me tell you, you can always issue a distress call and wait for help to arrive. Yeah, um, if you run out of fleet in FTL, you get dragged towards the nearest gravity well, and in general, the conventional wisdom is. "Quote unquote, hope it's not a black hole." So yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm also declaring a bounty on the remaining rogue minor fleets here. If you like, you can stick around here and help mop up before going to Corvus. So let's. Um... Oh, I went. I came in without turning on my transponder again. Ugh. There we go. So right. And with that, I'm afraid we're also at the end of the episode as I sell off this metal. And uh, I'm barely going to quite a stockpile of weapons here, actually, so... Hmm. Tempting. But, uh, yeah. Next time... Uh, well, we can either we can either continue with the quest or we can hunt down a few more fleets. Though the entire galaxy is now open to us because the FTL drives are now enabled, so we can get out of here. Nothing really of interest at the moment, though, but um, it's all local stuff at the moment down here. If we look, though, the bounty is 1,000 credits per frigate that I kill in the next 60 days. So this is something that um, system authorities do to react to a strong pirate presence. They, they issue a bounty on it. And I think I might take advantage of that a little bit next time. See if I can hunt down some rogue pirate fle fleets and, you know, cause some trouble. But this has been Iron Mark 3. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. And I'll catch you all some other time. Yes, indeed. See you all later. <laughs>